my Honda Wave. It's an awesome bike, but is it awesome on dirt with these tires? I've got a couple of events coming up and they are going to be mainly gravel and off-road. So I'm going to swap these tires over and figure out just how better it makes it. But let's go do some testing first. And today I'm so thankful because I've got my good mate Andrew, who you'll know from the Malaysia to Thailand video helping out. Let's go see what happens. Currently we've got Shinko SR898s. This is an 80, uh, actually no, it's a 90, 70, 90, 80, 17. So there you go, 90 mil wide, 80% of that measurement high sidewall, and then 17 inch, and the front's got a 70, 90, 17. So we're gonna swap these out for dirt tires, but let's go figure out how these work on dirt first. Ugh, I slipped. That's embarrassing, I'm filming it too. You wanna wipe it up? I might try to put a what? Yeah, that'll be cool. Maybe. We've been riding now for about eight or nine minutes on this road, and it's turned into wonderful country, twisty bends. And before, it was just a nice little suburb in the middle of the city. Look at that thing. Now, I know this video is about the wave, but I just, that thing getting its foot pegs down. Around corners is crazy. <laughs> wow. Okay, back to the wave. We've found some gravel. I'm gonna go riding. Andrew's gonna follow me and we'll see just how this thing handles with road tires on a bit of a dodgy surface. Alright, so let's go. I hate going over those bumps in the middle there. This is one of the hardest parts of riding on gravel is that if you get into these big loose bits in the middle, you kind of don't really have any control, especially with the tyres that I've got here. So, you've got to be a bit careful when you're going around all these corners. And here we go. This is it. This is how fast I can go. 60k an hour. 70 kilometres per hour. So that's fun. I want to know exactly how this thing operates on gravel. So let's see, if I do a clutch drop, how long does this tire spin for? And let's come back to the same spot soon with the dirt tire on and see exactly what happens. Yeah. Yeah, I'll do it again. I'll do it on a loose bit. So we felt like the first test that I did wasn't that great, so I'm going to do it again. I'm going to lose a bit of the road. Alright, round two, let's see how this goes. This tyre has been pretty awesome, I've done a few skids on it, but as you can see with this gravel performance, it's just not going to stick for these longer group rides that we're doing on gravel and off-road. I think we'll go get it changed. Let's go get it changed. Here's the spot where I started. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I'd say there. Twelve meters. So that's twelve meters of sliding. I'm still getting used to filming with everything on my uh, helmet, but we're doing all right. Let's go get these tires on. There's just one important thing you have to do before you change all your tires. tires popped I've got two little off-road options here I'm thinking uh, on advice of Andrew I'm gonna put this one on the rear and this one on the front uh, it's a bit more aggressive it's older and harder and stuff like that so I don't really mind if my rear end slips out but if the front does it's not that exciting I'm gonna take the rear wheel and the front wheel off at different times and show you exactly how I change tires this one is a Shinko SR241 
I believe, which is a golden boy. It's 2.75 by 17. This thing here is a Parwin tire. I don't know what it is or where it's from. I just found it from a friend. Thanks, Ethan, you're the man. All right, let's get it done. I've got my 17 inch rim here. Now, what do I do when I'm changing tires? Well, first of all, we take the valve cap off. And with the valve cap removed, I remove the valve. Now, always pays to remove the valve when you're changing a tire, even though this one I technically don't need to because it's popped and there's definitely no air in there. It's just good practice. Done. So get our valve and our valve cap. Loosen off your nut. Slam that up all the way to the top, but I don't take it off at this point. So, yep. We've got free movement there, and the tire's off the bead for sure. We're all good to go. So... I slam it into my tire machine. I'm going to get some tire lubricant, which helps a massive amount. And I'm only going to put it in a quarter of the way around. Now you can use soap, soapy water, anything like that if you want to. It usually does the same job, but tire lubricant definitely has its place. Save the rim so we do that slightly off. Some of the things here are things I have to do because that's how you change a tire. Some of them are because this tire machine is quite old. At the moment, you can probably see through there, I'm picking up both sides of the tyre. I want to bring it back so I've only got one side of the tyre, and the other side's still down. And, we slam it over the top there. And now, I just turn this around. And that's how easy it is. One half off. Obviously, we've got to take this off now. And the reason we're doing that is because we need to get this tube out. You see how it's spun? Take off the nut, push that through. Pull the tube out, and there's our tube. Now where there's a split from when we did the skid, that's cool. This, we don't need it anymore. And we've got to get this off, okay? So, this back in. Lock that machine in place. Down. Up. All good to go. And at this point we can just pull the tire off. So that's it. Let's get the new tire. Here's the new tire. Does it have a direction? Always check and see if there's a direction. There doesn't seem to be any direction markings on here therefore it can be run either way if there are direction if there are direction markings adhere to them one thing about this tire is it says a few things about it 2.75 by 17 that's the size now this here this is actually quite bad 36 to 16 this is made in 2016 so it's a four-year-old tire but as i'm only going to be using it for a couple of events i don't mind technically you should be using tires no more than a couple of years old this is the 36th week of 2016 so every tire should have this little oval with those four numbers in there and the first two are the the week of that year and the last two uh, the last two digits of that year i've got heavy duty tubes these are 70 117s and yeah this tire is a bit wider than 70 117 but they will still do the job now i've got heavy duty tubes and the reason i have a heavy duty tube actually the tire tube i threw away before let's go get it i don't know if you can tell here but the difference in the sidewall is quite big this is much thicker than this one here so as I'm doing a few off-road events, it might be running lower pressure, I want a thicker tube. It's got less chance of splitting, just as this one has, but of course this split due to a skid. We need to find our hole again, holes over here. This needs lube. It seriously makes your life so much easier. The tire's in the middle. We put it up on the upper edge, in the rim, and we just slam it round, help it round. And once it gets to this point, it's popped into place, okay? So that's that. And slam that in cool so that's come through now you want to grab the valve nut and put that on just a couple of turns to stop it from slipping back inside the rim and then you tuck this tube in and tuck it in and you see here you want this to be straight when you're finished okay so try get it straight before you start otherwise you've got a easier shot of ripping your valve now i always start with the valve over here so it's the last thing that i get to You've got to be careful not to trap the tube with the tire levers. Okay, so I've got one tire lever. I just put the lip over. Make sure we aren't tripping that tube. And you've got to hold this inside the depth of the rim. And pop. Done. Alright, so we've got our valve remover or installer and our valve there. What we do is we get this thing onto the bead. And once it's on the bead... I block that with my third finger, I grab the valve and the valve pin, throw it in that hole as quick as you can to avoid it slipping off the bead, and then grab our nut, slam that down the bottom and then tighten that up once you're finished. Don't forget to tighten that up, it's pretty important. And at the moment, we're at about 30 psi, so we'll just do a solid 32 and call it a day, I think. 
It'll do. Old. New. Old. New. Sweet, we've got dirt tires. Let's go do the exact same things we did before, which was try stop really quickly on gravel and accelerate. I think it was 12 meters before that uh, the rear tire would spin before it gained traction. So we'll go to the exact same place, pin it wide open and neutral and clutch drop it into first. Even though there's no hand clutch, it's still possible with the centrifugal transmission. So let's go and do some skids. Woo so this is all with knobblies. I'm able to corner heavily and do all the things you do with those road going Shinko SR898s. I've got a Parwin tyre 275-17 on the back and a Shinko SR241 27517 on the front. However, the Shinko is considerably wider than the Parwin and that's just proof of something I've known for a long time that just because it says 27517 and another brand has the uh, 27517 doesn't mean they'll be the exact same dimensions. While it's close, the Shinko's definitely a bit wider, and while, because the Shinko's on the front at the moment, it's making for some interesting cornering. Because it's wider on the front, I'm not having to counter steer as much as normal, it naturally wants just to fall around the corner that way, which is quite fun. So yeah, let's find this gravel, not long now. And here we are, on this slightly corrugated dirt road, with some considerable patches of gravel and I've got my new tyres and it feels great I feel I mean it could be a placebo effect but I feel like I'm able to go around corners much easier I'm gonna try accelerate and see what happens around this corner at about 60 yep no problems and this corner at 60 no problems I would not have done that previously with the uh, road tires on now that little indent there is where I started my skid last time so we'll go directly next to it drop down into neutral just in case you're wondering what I'm doing is we're in neutral now it says we're in first but look because I've held it down I can still rev it will not engage first until I let go of the pedal that's how I'm doing this uh, clutch drop here 12 meters last time let's see what happens here we go I've got dirt tires let's get out of here I felt like that picked up way quicker and it was in the exact same spot let's go check it out sweet so that's from 12 meters to I can't remember what I just did three and a half one two three yeah three uh, four and a four meters we dropped eight meters off the uh, sliding distance when you drop the clutch on this thing with this new dirt tire that's really cool but we're definitely gonna have to change up this front we've got some rubbing I don't know if you can see under there rubbing on each side that's all right good fun well there you have it that's gravel on road tires and gravel on gravel tires I guess uh, I'm definitely going to be changing up the size of the front but I will keep the same model uh, the Shinko SR241 is awesome but having uh, a 275 Shinko on the front when it's actually about three inches wide and then a 275 on the rear that's actually 2.75 inches wide makes it quite odd for cornering it's not bad but it's just not what I'm after so yeah thanks for helping Andrew uh, see ya Cheers, small bike stuff. The more you know, ride more. Ding ding dong, la play for ding ding dong, la play for ding ding dong, la long ding dong.